so much, uh, and thanks for coming back. Uh, in fact, in our first lecture, we discussed a uh, very large aspect of water, water from history, art, culture, and science, and the nature of the special character and the characteristic of water as a muddy. Now, here we, uh, these are the, for the beginners, the areas of research we are going to be discussing soon. Uh, technology, these different areas. If you have any questions regarding these, the most of us modeled options and there was options in there. And then distillation. Thermal. Some 
special biological parameters to be uh, considered for this water. So there's so many uh, characteristics of uh, water, uh, if we classify water according to its use. This is the greatest impact uh, vision, uh, which uh, I think they were one of the modules, uh, energy, water, and food nexus. And this is initiated in fact. Uh, Shell is taking up internationally uh, Shell technology, uh, and they every year they they conduct uh, big boots and discussions on it, and they are trying to put some water labeling on products. For example, rice. Rice is uh, cultivated in a very abundant water conditions. It is cooked in a very abundant water conditions. So we should put on rice what water. Uh, consumption level of prices and similarly all different types of products just like you have seen like if we purchase a ticket in internationally they put a carbon tariff over it how much carbon it will cost aeroplane tickets and they give carbon credits to the carbon economy the idea is that next uh, few years this should be promoted that water should also be put on the products this is called water leveling. We are not covering in this lecture. It's a bigger issue in the area. But in fact, this is the concept behind it. First thing is to classify. Still, water is not classified. If we say water treatment, we say water treatment. Although, if we look deep into the matter, we have 10, 20 different types of water. And every type of water needs different uh, scientific operations, treatments. The chemistry of every water class is different, which you have to tackle. So these are the uh, few special water types we discussed in our previous discussion as well. You might have seen uh, fresh water, saline, slightly saline water, moderately highly saline ocean water, and all these parameters are given. Ocean water, saline water is characteristic of fact ocean water, sea water, with high concentration of salt, sodium, and potassium chloride is present. This means conductivity, which is measured in the form of conductivity, and hard water and soft water. Heavy water and also we discussed uh, body water. And uh, only one thing, uh, if we did not uh, uh, consider or put our attention to any of these or all these classes, uh, sooner or later you, me, and we all will be in hot waters. Uh, so, therefore, this is another type of uh, water which is coming in the future, maybe we will face. Uh, so, it's a merging class of water. And then we have uh, water population. Uh, this facility is in 2015, it's latest data. You can see uh, 663 million people still uh, rely on uh, unimproved water resources. Unimproved means untreated water resources. They are exposed to directly natural resources of water. And 98% of water in the world cannot be used directly or indirectly. Uh, let's come back to water pollution sources. If you want to test water by some, uh, under some uh, very under equipped or well equipped, <coughs> we need to know what type of pollutions and how these pollutions enter into. Uh, this is the water pollution, you know all the water pollution, the definition, physical or chemical uh, things which make water uh, unfit for use, consumption, and utility for human beings and their industrial or more productive things. And there are different categories and different things, uh, things classified uh, pollutant sources, like you can say sewage. Uh, disease causing agents, uh, sediment uh, pollution, which is dust particles which causes turbidity in the water, that is cloudiness, inorganic uh, uh, alkyl nutrients, uh, the picture behind you can see here, there are alkyls also going there, and organic compounds, inorganic radioactive substances, and thermal uh, pollution. Thermal pollution is also a form of pollution, which is not very, uh, we are not very exposed to it. The temperature of water consistently remains very high. Dissolved oxygen concentration decreases because in the hot conditions of oxygen escapes and fish die or all of that, whatever the population is determined, uh, is also one of the. Uh, and then water pollution we can classify in two forms. One is the point source. Uh, the pollution will get tracked to a certain point from where it is originating. And the other is non point source pollution, it's a very dangerous uh, type of pollution source that we which is mostly on the river or such as water that we cannot track that. It just comes in the way. So all these two major pollution sources uh, are damaging the health of water. Municipal water pollution we can uh, expect the stars to suppose if we say are complete 
house lights, uh, and we can expect all these ranges coming from weathering of aging pipes and gutters, everything, uh, and uh, and copper from auto brakes, lining. So the different sources are exposed here, and they are coming back into the runoff mm -hmm. and the stream and then stream. Mm -hmm. So we we are not conscious in our daily life that how water is in fact getting impurities from the pipelines, from the dogs, or whatever they are using, and they are invisible. So therefore, the gravity of the matter is not very sensitized at the bucket level. Then water pollution in industrial uh, areas, we can see if we have a, a pulp mills color and silver dyes, cosmetics, these, so many things enter into it. And if we imagine even in one house, we add so many toxic chemicals, all cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, uh, soaps, detergents, all, all other sorts of waste, they are generating so many disease causing uh, problems. And one of the biggest uh, threat is endocrine disrupting chemicals coming from the pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. which are used in it. And these endocrine disrupting chemicals are disrupting the endocrine system of human beings, yeah, which is not uh, monitored even here. Even in drinking water, we, we monitor, even in UAE, we monitor. That in drinking water, there are chemicals, and we can start with chemicals. Then, groundwater pollution, we uh, receive groundwater pollution by different sources, and uh, obviously, uh, major nutrient agents I mentioned are nitrates, nitrites, ammonia. They are interconvertible under different conditions, so they are very dangerous. And then we have deep uh, and actually hazardous waste, gasoline, sewage, chemicals, and all these plastic lines. We can see what paper is damaged and can find aquifers and stuff. So all these are mixed up because the land and the soil is a porous material and it allows different types of uh, water pollution sources. This is one of the neighboring country. So purification as a source of pollution. Purification is also become some kind of source of pollution, not only the filter, which it is uh, not replaced, but even chlorination, which is used, which has been used and still is used, I think, it is banned in most of the countries, in all the rest of the country. You cannot smell chlorine in your water, but here you can. All these byproducts, which are mentioned on the right hand side, they uh, they are formed when chlorination is done. So then excessive chlorination takes place. Even only chlorine will smell when excessive chlorination takes place. So all hollow compounds, oxy uh, halogens and hollow ketones and hollow acetonitriles are produced when we do a small uh, scale or, or at, the, at the source of water we do some chlorination. This is the simplest form of uh, insecticide or, or germicide which was used. So, this is again an industry. Uh, we have different uh, quality standards. WHO standards are uh, followed for uh, drinking water, especially uh, bottled water, and US EPA. They are very close to each other. And then we have uh, APHA, FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Uh, Parks and Environment Protection Council has also uh, EPA has developed some standard I think uh, six or seven we are not updating it. EU drinking water directives and then national requirements and then we have uh, different units we are mentioning parts per million and parts per million is very understandable. I think most of you know understand how the units are mentioned that uh, milligram per liter is BPM and micrograms per liter is so these are the standards uh, for drinking water uh, we we see metals especially metals and pH and other things, and go to dissolve solids, GTS, uh, the threshold limits which should be followed for the uh, standards. And uh, we have uh, this, meant, these are also mentioned in the handout cycle. Uh, then we have uh, surface water parameters. Surface water would include some new parameters like BOD and COD. Chemical oxygen demand is tested for those water which have more uh, organic pollution, uh, like paint, oils, whatever is there, which is tested that the, how much oxygen is needed to oxidize or break down or destroy those chemical organic compounds. And then biochemical oxygen demand uh, is meant for five days or seven days different uh, is taken so that we can understand how much oxygen is needed for those microbial uh, secretions which are present in nature. And then 
nitrates, nitrides, and uh, metals. We, we will see uh, some metal threats and hazards uh, uh, in drinking water. I'm taking an example of one of these. Uh, this is especially uh, drinking water parameters. Cyprolamine, uh, chlorine, conductive tea, all these parameters are mentioned here. And we need to follow all them. Turbidity uh, determines meant for cloudiness. They are international, US, 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 US. And local are not much different from the They are more stretched or they are more relaxed. In fact, uh, uh, naturally, you see, there are two things. One is guidelines and one is standard. But we are talking about standard. Guidelines, mostly WHO or international regulatory bodies, they issue guidelines. Like WHO issues guidelines. Guideline is a broader range. You are supposed to follow. And sometimes those contaminants, those fake or its toxic effects are not stated yet. Guidelines will advise that this should be taken a special note of it and please avoid this. But standard is a last resort for saving life. So standard is a legislative uh, threshold limit, must have to follow. So in fact, here these are standards. So all these limits will vary in guidelines. Biomed will give a, a range of uh, two different parameters. Uh, Spore pollution, water, all these. And these are just, uh, so for example, this is the water steward uh, ship uh, lines, uh, which is a uh, corporate body, with a growing concern of uh, civil society and uh, public uh, organizations, representations uh, in the last decades. They were concerned about the pumping water by different corporate bodies who are selling water, bottled water or other sources. So to combat this, they have combined a corporate body which is the Alliance for Water Stewardship. They are promoting water welfare uh, trainings, water uh, basin uh, remediation, or recovery trainings. They have also established some standards and this was established in 2008. So nowadays this alliance, this is another parallel standard uh, certification uh, which is all, uh, accepted by UNESCO and all other UN bodies to increase the mass awareness or corporate mass awareness in fact, so that we can take care of the water basin as well. At the same time when we are pumping water out from the water and also that. So all these companies, uh, uh, they are part of it, uh, and I the water stewardship, and they have uh, uh, different, uh, three different uh, gold, gold and platinum level of uh, awards which they award to different companies, and uh, they meant for six different uh, stages with get the uh, conduct training and the evaluate also. And uh, so this is in fact a, a body to uh, to ensure a sustainable uh, water consumption so that we can ensure that at least at some time the awareness is created so that water should also be conserved. Water quality. So, so it's not just about the water quality, the overall system that we They develop their own standard as well, but in fact it's a stable. So beyond, in fact, the, the scope is not scientific or only this. The, the scope is also to defend what we have uh, commercial use of water. The water is uh, meant uh, sometimes that uh, this water is natural and not why it is sold for price. So they are. So this uh, organization, uh, at the same time, there is some quality assurance. They have established some standards, uh, some limits for pumping for different uh, geomet uh, aquifers.
pH testing it can be done. It's very simple, and I think it's a school level uh, scientific testing. People are already doing a lot. Uh, we need to be within the range of neutrality, so that should be. And then we have different uh, pH ranges uh, is mentioned there uh, of uh, different uh, things and uh, products we are using. They are pH, uh, so they are acidic alkaline based on their nature. And then you can test it. It's very simple uh, testing, mostly used to dissolve oxygen and water temperature. Uh, this is the relationship you can see as the uh, summer of the heat season, as the temperature increases between 9 and 10. You see the oxygen that. We can mention it with oxygen meter, which is a measure of motion. Dissolve oxygen and water temperature. Uh, here we can see in the depth the flow of oxygen and water pressure on the upper surface. So if you are sampling, it should be a properly representative of the water uh, if we are going to test it. Uh, Turbidity, cloudiness, or muddiness of the water. Uh, it is a non centric to be introduced to test cloudiness. Uh, so if it is, which is available mostly in the laboratory and the school laboratory, different uh, stores. Uh, which measure the transparency of the water. This is the transparency is affected by suspended solids also. This is the one of the measure of E. coli also, which is biological contamination as well. Uh, then we have total dissolved solids, uh, the presence of salts. Dissolved solids uh, is measured by conductive force. And in a very simple experiment, it is mentioned how uh, we can say it's conductive force. Electrolyte conductivity, not uh, electron based conductivity. Which is normally discussed by some uh, conductometer, which is a portable conductometer, which is a bit about the size of pen, and but also can be tested in a school level lab here. Yes. Uh, total dissolved products, these are the uh, TDS meters available in the market, and this uh, uh, total product takes the huge presence of different sodium, uh, ions, chloride ions, potassium, and ions, salt, and most in seawater, which is uh, in the range of 40,000 ppm. Uh, and it is a degree of 2 to 3,000 uh, ppm, which is great for, for use, of course. Uh, testing nitrides, nitrates, and so on. Again, we have uh, sensor uh, strips uh, which can be used for nitrogen, uh, nitrate, and nitride strips, and uh, chlorine. And they are compared, the color is compared later on so that we can see. Otherwise, we need some uh, equipment, proper, um, what we can say, uh, Hash and other companies will acquire some equipment for test different uh, ions, cations, and ions. But these are strips available uh, if you don't have it. So the, again, you can test it. Uh, negative test uh, can be ensured by of nitride, suppose. This is one of the tests in the class which shows negative. Uh, and similarly, for R and copper, we can test. Hardness and alkalinity, alkalinity uh, measure pH as well. As well as hardness, you can measure here. And uh, equalize. E. coli is uh, the measure of, uh, is a representative indicator of this for pathogens. The pathogens are more than E. coli, of course, yeah. some more bacteria, viruses, and uh, protozoas, unicellular organisms can be present, but E. coli is a representative indicator of this. If it is present, we are expected that others will ask in chance. This is its threshold range also here, reasonable quality 0 to 10, filtered uh, and dangerous and very dangerous. And this can be tested by a simple way, like presence and absence, mm -hmm. DA, a type of uh, check test. Uh, very, uh, the body, but again, we need a uh, sensor <coughs> solution. Uh, these are the procedures which is mentioned there. Mm -hmm. And we, we put what sensor in the bottles, like in the middle, uh, is a negative, which is not showing any color indicator, so just like indicator uh, in chemistry. Vibration we show positive body form and positive equalize. We can see different colors. We can mention that this is present. This is not standard test to ensure that if you do this test, then the water is free from not. But it is just an indicator so that we can uh, go for further test. Uh, then we have uh, bio biochemical oxygen demand. Uh, this is uh, about wastewater mostly, not uh, drinking water sources. And these are the different uh, levels. If it is 1 ppm, 2 ppm, you can say it is good for disposal. And similarly, 3 to 5 ppm. So, laboratory testing. 
drinking water uh, parameters. We, we need to test uh, some basic uh, test parameters <coughs> to go for drinking water. Uh, there are some uh, can be test strips which we have already mentioned. Uh, color is uh, some pictures. We can see here that, and then we have uh, colorimetry and photometers with the top slide, photometry and colorimetry and this compared uh, to and this meters and then water quality, chloride and uh, there are a few metals that we can present in drinking water or at the source. So need to test. This is the threshold limit for high and it's uh, health effects. Uh, it comes from the pipelines mostly due to stains, clothes during washing and different uh, antiseptic provided. Manganese is also present in maximum groundwater and it has the threshold limit as well. The common refined manganese and iron together because they are close together. The particulars have the same thing in properties. Manganese in heaven. So this is the limit uh, for, for a drinking water. Lines, uh, from 0.4 to 0.5. And then it causes bad taste, and these are the common effects. Arsenic is very alarming and very threatening metal, which is present in the water so strongly. And Pakistan is also present uh, uh, in the countries where we have uh, arsenic. Here. So all those countries which are uh, this brown, they are having arsenic in the And arsenic uh, normally comes from the mineral extractions, uh, pesticides, processes, uh, wastes. It has uh, very alarming uh, effects on human health. Uh, one of the visible leaves, you can see the skin. And these are your WH pipelines. Chloride. Pakistan is again in the region where we have chloride <coughs> in the underground water. Chloride is added sometimes to, uh, to make it better for tooth health or but excessive quantity of chloride or proportion of chloride is very dangerous. It is also part of catalyst in that use in chemical industry, mostly pain industries and pharmaceutical industries. So they reach out and they are not uh, uh, degradable ultimately because they are very effective uh, diseases. This is uh, in Lahore, I think 10 to 15 years before, there was a very big scandal uh, near the industrial wastewater in the country, and maybe still here. Yeah. So chloride is very uh, toxic. It is more common than arsenic. Arsenic quantity is very less. Very similar. Biological test. These are bacteria on the tip of the pinion. These bacteria. So biological tests uh, which are in, uh, which are disease causing agents and we need to, to be careful about all these uh, biological disease bacteria, virus and uh, unimolecular, unicellular organisms like protozoa or organisms. And what we cause is detecting problems. Uh, hepatitis is most common in Pakistan, you know, hepatitis A and E, the source of contaminated uh, amount of water. The other hepatitis variety uh, problems are in fact transmitted uh, from person to person. So, in fact, uh, all these uh, are coming from, from our water. So, these are the four different classes which we can expect uh, from the bacteria. Virus, protozoas, and elements. Elements are the worms, round worms, and all of it. They are larger in size as you get to virus and bacteria. See I suppose uh, this is one of the representations which shows bacteria, which is in size. And you can see the four diameter of here. The worst osmosis in the brain is point to the video one micro. This is the technique which is used for uh, pure water in Pakistan. So the core parameter, uh, this is the core. So what we can expect with the virus should be filtered out and everything. And that's why we use RO, because virus is only uh, controlled by the reverse osmosis. Otherwise, microfiltration, microfiltration can filter out bacteria and other uh, large molecules. 
So uh, you need to run a calibration, and the procedure is given there for calibration. It's not very difficult. Advantages of using the ion stepped electrodes. Uh, these electrodes uh, can be used. They are uh, disposable, obviously. They are a little bit expensive if they are not uh, electrochemical. The electrochemical can be used. So these are the different uh, pH uh, of uh, different uh, products we are using, and uh, we can classify the such electrodes. And then the optical methods, the fluorescence, the fluorescence, the fluorescence spectroscopy is used. But again, you need training to operate the machine, and also you need training to to read the uh, signals of the, the research is not possible in general testing laboratories. Pelvimetry, uh, uh, we have different uh, uh, possibilities. Visual testing, color test, or drop down test, or digital vibration of color test. So photometers are used. All these, in fact, high sensitive electrodes are used for the visible photometer. So when you have a standard solution, you put the solution in you change its color. So they have optimized a certain uh, absorbance to which uh, yes, all these are uh, understand spectrophotic platforms. Uh, suppose we have a uh, spectrophotometer, which is one of them. They have given with the equipment, all these. And, uh, and then these are the effect. There. These are the tubes of cubics. Yeah. So, every cubic is once used, is uh, one You can test uh, organic, you can test uh, ions, radical ions, the sulfates, chromates, all these uh, methods. This is the beauty that only one platform can be used to test organic, inorganic, and all other. Otherwise, you need uh, different uh, special training to operate and read the spectrum <coughs> for organic and non This is atomic absorption spectroscopy. It's very uh, now it becomes classical. Uh, so we can see the machine. All metals, mostly metal, and it's a very common demonstration. And dissolved oxygen is also tested. And it's, uh, this type of uh, brochure is normally available in high spectrum electrodes. It's an aspect of the approach for measuring dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is very important to keep because by dissolved oxygen, you're going to be like COD and other things. They are the fundamental So, all these uh, techniques can be used mostly in industries. We have their own setup. You will see the next few So, thank you. Do you have any questions? And Pakistan, obviously, there are so many. Uh, the monitoring culture is not obviously. And uh, also, Globally, in fact, uh, now the renovation works more easy to do. That's why I'm to that for As it is going to be the same. They are expensive, but uh, another company uh, has developed another technique which is reusable electrochemical electrodes. So, this is the brand is for this. Uh, if we say atomic absorption, ICT, or other techniques, they are the service their techniques. They are not easy to do so in this type of industry. So, I think the right now the issue is to develop user friendly, portable uh, tools for treatment and science like electrical is good at those things. Who programming uses